As you know, the world is still suffering from many problems caused by COVID-19. Politics, economy, society, culture, education system, every aspect of this time are influenced by COVID-19. They are confused. They don't know what they do. Even spiritual life are hindered by COVID-19. And we sit around thinking, wow, for how much longer till it's resolved? God, when, when? There are many voices that claim only cure and vaccine development is the real solution. But there are as many predictions that even if the vaccine is developed, the problem caused by virus will persist. Many people are captivated in fear and worry about virus. Actually, it's not just about virus. The fear towards various catastrophes like sickness, war, natural disaster, famine. That fear was never a stranger to us, humanity. And the foundation of all these worries and fears is the fear of pain and death. And death and its pain is the result of sin. That is the crime of betraying God. The vaccine cure of COVID-19 will remedy our fear in this particular case, this virus. But it is impossible for this vaccine to cure the fear of death. Its only remedy, the true cure for death, is in Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only salvation, the true Savior who can deliver us from our inevitability. He's only the Savior of the world. The word Savior in the Bible means rescuer or deliverer or the one who resolves the problem. In the time of Jesus, the society, the people, usually reserved this word, uh, this word uh, Savior for seizure of Rome. Because people thought the Roman emperor should be a savior because he had power and fortune. So if the Roman emperor wants to resolve my problem, solve my problem, he can do it. So that's why they think, they said the Roman emperor is, was a savior. And this is a very important question to us. Who or what, what? Do you consider to be the solution in all your problems? We always encounter problems in this life journey, right? At that time, who or what do you think to be the solution of your problems? Do you think if we have money, everything is okay? The money can solve every problem? Or you think, okay, if I have health, everything is okay, and everything will be solved? Or good reputation, fame, good relationship with family or other friends? If you consider like that, they should be your God, the Savior. Absolutely, all of these things are necessary and favorable in our life journey. But none of them can be our savior. The faith we have is to be aware and acknowledge that true solution 
to all our problems in spirit, soul, and body are found in one true Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we believe in. When you experience that your personal problems are resolved and cured spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, and financially, in the name of Jesus Christ, you, can, you may realize Jesus is the one true Savior of the world as well as me, my. This understanding is not just information, but experience. If I borrow the word from the Timothy, this is the knowledge of the truth. So when you have the faith that Jesus is only the Savior of this world and you can experience, you may experience and you understand the true knowledge of the truth in Jesus Christ like that, you know what? There is a security and protection of God in the lives of those who know that Jesus is the Savior of the world. There is miraculous healing and restoration. There is a river of living water overflowing in them. The gratefulness and awe of being able to join in God's glory and joy overflows. So that brings the question. What is right attitude? What is the attitude found in those who know that Jesus is the only Savior of the world. This is the message we have to listen to before God. They, those who know that Jesus is the Savior of the world, number one, they look at Jesus pointed by the women. We should look toward Jesus, who believers point out. Don't look at just pointer, finger of the women. When the women or believers point out Jesus with a finger, you have to see Jesus, not this finger. Don't say about this finger is long and short, or pretty or ugly. You don't need to see that finger. Look toward Jesus. Let's go back to the scripture, verse 39. Many Samaritans from the town believing in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. Uh, as you know, today's scripture is the ending conclusion of a Samaritan woman's story. And through her testimony, many of the Samaritan people join in faith and speak the graceful confession, we know Jesus is the Messiah of the world, the Savior of the world. Here, we are seeing actually the fulfillment of the purpose of the book of John. As you know, the book of John's purpose is to believing that Jesus is Christ and the Son of God and believing uh, by believing, you may have eternal life, right? So we can see this scene in the story. Samaritan people confessed Jesus is the Savior of the world. That means they have life in Jesus. Not from Jewish people, not from Galileans, from Samaritan people who Jewish people, Galileans, are despised, are despised. They were despised by Jew and Galileans. But they confessed. They had eternal life, and they confessed Jesus is the Savior of the world. Samaritan woman met Jesus. She met a strange Jewish man who asked water, and then she met Jesus as the prophet who knows what, he, what she did, and then finally she 
uh, was told about the true worship in spirit and truth, and then she realized, she came to realize Jesus is Christ, the Messiah. After that, she couldn't just stand still. In fact, until that very day, she avoided people because of her past scars and wounds. But she could no longer bear to be idle and isolated. She had to let people know what happened to her. Without even properly knowing what kind of transformation she went through, she joined the table of Jesus Christ, actually harvested the fruit of eternity. And you saw that even the scars and wounds of, wound of her past and the pain of her present days were shifted up as a tool to testify Jesus. In the scripture, the testimony is the, in English is known, but in Greek word, that tense is, is um, present perfect. It is to emphasize continuing action. So we can imagine she continued to proclaim, I met Messiah. I met the one who knows what I did. Is not, his, is, is not he Messiah, Christ? I can imagine that. She may have run through the streets shouting, or she could have knocked on every door because it was midday when no one would be on the streets. We do know that her actions got the attention of the neighbors. Actually, she was sad, pitiful, and antisocial women. She was someone who actively avoided everyone and never opened her mind to anyone. But she came running with brilliant conviction on her face. They were all, the Samaritan people all, were captivated by strange power in her testimony. But what's important to notice here is that Samaritan people were looking toward Jesus, not that woman. This is what he asked of us. The Samaritan woman didn't ask people to look at herself, how she changed it, how she, her life transformed. She was fully occupied making people bring their attention towards Jesus. But you know what? Including us, people are often more occupied with the women. People over Jesus. So when the particular person in a church is in good and beneficial relationship with you or oneself, he or she will put up a pretense of faith. I have a good faith. And then you find out somebody that is who you, res you have respect or you like, but they have the wrongdoing. The time many people give up their faith. My brothers and sisters, listen carefully. People are just people. A person is just a person. You have a good Christian friend, you are so blessed. But remember, they are people, not your saviors. Just look at, look at Jesus whom they point out. Do you have a good pastor, Pastor Youngie? Well, it was about, wasn't me and that laughing. Anyway, if you feel I have a good pastor, you are so blessed also. But remember, he's a person also. He's not the Savior. Look at Jesus, he points out. There is a salvation. At the time you can experience, Jesus is the Savior of the world. And then you can have strong life with Jesus. When John the Baptist proclaimed, look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. 
And that, at, that time, at that time, the correct response uh, John wanted from, from, uh, from his disciples, actually, the right response of the, his, his disciples is to look toward the Lamb of God. Right? Yes, right. But majority of John disciple, John's disciples was still fixating on John the Baptist. They are fully occupied, occupied with a great prophet who prepared the way for the Lord. And what happened to them? When Jesus began his ministry and his disciples, Jesus' disciples started to baptize people and then increasing their numbers more than John the Baptist, the disciples of John the Baptist were jealousy and having sense of rivalry to Jesus. It's ridiculous. How could they have salvation? How could they Experience Jesus is the savior of the world in that mood. Every single witness of Jesus always told everyone to look toward Jesus. The people are captiva captivated by witnesses' work because there was miraculous signs, wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. The time witnesses are frustrated and again, again, told everyone to look for, look toward Jesus, not themselves. When Peter and John, the, the, the apostle, cured the crippled man since birth by the temple before the entrance of beauty, the man healed, ran, and jumped, and praised the Lord. At the time, people stared the apostles Peter and John in shock and awe. But Peter's reply was, Oh, man of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if our, by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? Peter turned people's attention toward Jesus. And people should look toward Jesus. When Barnabas and Paul also cured a man crippled since birth through faith, and the shocked people started to call the Barnabas, the God Jews, the Jupiter, and Paul is, um, in English sound, Hermes. Hermes. At that time, the two apostles, Barnabas and Paul, ripped their own clothes and jumped into the crowd and cried like this. Look at the book of Acts 14, 15. People, what are you doing? We are humans too. They didn't want the people stared themselves. Because they understood they were just human beings like other people's. And then, we are humans too, just like you. We are proclaiming the good news to you, right? And turn to the living God and away from such worldless thing. Such a worldless thing is to look at people. Just worship people. He made the heaven the earth, the sea, and everything in them. This is what the ministers, the pastors are supposed to do. This is all witnesses, the church leaders are supposed to do. And, and everyone, do you want to see Jesus is your savior and he is the savior of the world? You must pay attention to this call and turn your gaze toward Jesus only over witnesses, pastors, ministers, leaders. When you look at toward over people, look at toward Jesus over people, just following the pointers, don't look at the pointers, 
Look at, the, look at him. The point is to point out, at the time, only then you can finally hear the words of God. Therefore, number two, those who want to see that Jesus is the Savior of the world, their faith is established through listening God's words. Our faith is established through listening of God's words. Listening God's words. When we hear the testimony and direct our focus towards Jesus, we also can listen to the words of Jesus and join in faith. That is, we have to go forward. We have to. Uh, that is the. That is the point we have to step on. Let's go back to today's scripture again, verse 40 and 41. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. That means they welcome Jesus and they, uh, I mean, they welcome Jesus and they give, the, give him hospitality. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word, Jesus' word. They followed the testimony of a Samaritan woman, saw the Lord, and invited Jesus to stay with them. They welcomed Jesus and listened to his word. Then, no, then more people believe in Jesus. To know that Jesus is the one true Savior of your life and the world, you must enter this place. You don't want to stay on his or her testimony. You must listen to the words of God through actually whatever, whether it, 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 should be, it could be sermons or Bible, reading Bible or reading good books. You can hear the word of Jesus like the word from God's mouth. In fact, our regeneration born again our growth in faith or our maturity is all done through the words of God. It is not because of her or him. It is not because of her change in life. Because it is from the word of of Jesus. That's why the first of Peter chapter 1 verse 23 through 25 says like that. Because you have been born again, not by a seed that perishes, but by one that cannot perish, by the living and everlasting word of God. Why is the parish web? 24, for all human life is like grass, and all its glory is like a flower in the grass. The grass dries up, and the flower drops up. But the word of the Lord lasts forever. Now, this word is the good news that was announced to you. Every single witness understood that they were flesh. In the flesh, from the flesh, there is no salvation. There is no solving problem. Only from the Savior. That means from the Word of God. Only His Word is eternal. His Word lasts forever. You and I, just a flesh, just a body, like grass. Whatever you have glory, what kind of glory you have, that is just a flower in the grass. Remember that. So how could we have solution from the flesh? Just look at Jesus 
whom they point out. And listen to Jesus' words, his words. We need to listen to Jesus' words, the word of God. So when we, we witness the testimony that points toward Jesus and bring ourselves to believe that only the word of God, the only word of God is true life and Jesus is the savior of the world, we can proclaim, which brings us to third step, we must make concrete statements in the source and foundation of our faith. So number three, they make the source of their faith known. I'd like to summarize this script. Uh, I'd like to summarize. First of all, we have to Jesus who believers points out not pointers. At that time, we can listen to God's word. Even though we are listening to the pastor, pastor's preaching, from that preaching, we can listen to the word of God from his mouth. Right? And then, we should make, we should proclaim the source of our faith to people. Here, we can see that people's faith is ripe enough for harvest, just like the load the grain was full and heavy. Go again, uh, uh, look at the verse 20, uh, 40, 42. They said to women, It's no longer because of what you said that we believe, because we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Uh, actually, the story about Samaritan women could have been concluded without this verse, actually. But by inserting this particular section, the Bible, the God's message, sends an important message to both deliverer and recipient, receivers of the gospel. It makes it clear and known that the salvation we receive is it through learning about Jesus and learning from Jesus and listening God's words, not through whoever delivered the gospel. And during the faith is not established through the word of ours, of people, but through the words of God. If we have faith and if you are uh, matured in Jesus Christ, because you are listening to God's words, it's not through Pastor Young's word, but through word of God. So they told her like that. Actually, from this point, the Samaritan woman is no longer necessary for the Samaritan people. She is unnecessary for Samaritan people. If this woman tried to, the Samaritan woman tried to persist in her position for the sake of making herself shine and feel important, she will be just cumbersome for them. Now, Jesus, the eternal groom here, and her role was done. Once the groom and the bride are joined together, the matchmaker, matchmaker's job is done. The matchmaker, the matchmaker, matchmaker must withdraw oneself out of that picture. Apostle Paul understood about this role. That's why he told Corinthian church like that, 2 Corinthians 11, 2, because I feel a divine jealousy for you since I, I, betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. That means I am a matchmaker between eternal groom Jesus and bride, um, the church. 
It provides a deep insight on what it meant to be a minister of the gospel and the Bible. The main point of this summary was that pastors or church leaders should be an unnecessary one. Unnecessary one. There's one book I've loved for almost 20 years. The, that book title is Unnecessary Pastor. That's my dream. I want to be an unnecessary pastor for you. Yes, I have many efforts to deliver God's words truly, and I have prayed for you and I'd like to lead you and speak to, to uh, the following Jesus and spiritual way. But if you expect me to have some charismatic something or success, or you can you can you, or if you think like or if you think like that, oh, I'm not sure I need Jesus, but I need Pastor Young He. At the time, I want to be an unnecessary pastor. That's my dream. I want to make you the bride of Jesus. Not my bride. We are his bride. That's what I should do and I want to do all the time. Same to you. Pastors, elders, any good Christians, they are not your saviors. Only Jesus is your savior. Only Jesus is the savior of the world. What do you think? What do you think her reaction about People's talking. When they said, oh, we don't need you. We don't need you anymore. Why do you believe in Jesus Christ? It's not because of your talking. Because we are listening God's words for ourselves. Huh? That means we don't need you anymore. What do you think her reaction? Actually, Bible didn't say about that. The Bible leaves that part blank and up to us. Do you imagine the woman to think or, think or say, I knew it. How dare they treat me this way? Do they not appreciate and respect that I am the one who led them to Jesus? Do not I deserve a better treatment? Do you think so? I don't think so. Because once a person transforms through the living water of Jesus and becomes a person of the Holy Spirit who worships in spirit and truth and join the table of Jesus, they are too occupied and busy to think of something like that. They are too occupied, too busy to think like that. They cannot think like that. Rather, I prefer to imagine the scenery with a holy imagination like this. The Samaritan woman would have a pleasant smile on her face, looking over the people's reaction before like that, before Jesus. And she feels relieved the fact that her job, her role was done successfully. And I can imagine she joined the people to further engage in the word of Jesus. I can picture this backstory where the Samaritan woman further deepens her relationship with Jesus, not simply as the savior healer of her scars and wounds, but the savior of the world. That's what 
we should have. Would you close your eyes, please? Just close, eye, close your eyes, please. Amazing. Amazing. And look at her face. Look at the smile. Feel with the Holy Spirit. Feel with spirit brilliance and glory. Which face is it? It looks familiar. I hope you can see your face in her face. That's your smile. That's a smile that you and I must and will beam. We also are those who have witnessed Jesus as a savior of the world. Savior of my life. Father God, thank you for giving us a message today. Yes, Father. We met Jesus. We have met Jesus. And we have confessed Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And we have drunk the living water in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is residing in us. We know that, Father. And we are worshiping you in spirit and truth. And also, Father, we are eager to proclaim Jesus is the Savior of the world. But sometimes, Father God, we would forget this truth. So we are disappointed because of somebody. Father, we don't want to see pointers. We want to see, we want to look toward only Jesus who they point out. Then, Father God, we want to listen to your words, not people's words, not people's talking, not gossips, not rumors, only your words and then we want to declare declare clearly the source of our faith yes only Jesus through your words we have the faith and the Father God without hesitation we want to be disappear, disappear, disappeared. We just want to sit among our brothers and sisters and we want to listen to your words deeply with our brothers and sisters because our job is done before you. But please help us to understand that and give us grace to follow your message. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.